everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, and today I'm here with Stefano, who is a product manager on Google Analytics. And Stefano is going to tell us all about a deep dive on user behavior analysis techniques within Google Analytics for properties. We're going to go through pathing, funnels, and cohort analysis, and I couldn't be more excited for this. So Stefano, thank you so much for being here, and over to you. Thank you, Krista. So with these three techniques, uh, you, there are three different ways to explore what you should do on uh, your app or site. Pathing, with pathing, you can pick uh, a starting point or an ending point and see how users go from that starting point or how users get to that ending point. With funnel, you have a specific user flow in mind and you can look at the performance of that user journey over time. And with court, you can select a start point and an ending point in your app or website and see how users go from one to the other over time and how that changes. And with that, we can jump into the demo. And here we are on the analysis app page. You can click on the path analysis to open uh, uh, the pattern technique. By default, it opens up with a pre-created uh, uh, path analysis. You can always uh, start over and create uh, the one that you want to do. In here, you can select either the path from a starting point or the path to a starting point. In our case, let's explore path to an ending point. And uh, you can select either an event name as an ending point or a page title or, or screen name. In our case, let's pick an event name and let's pick purchase since this is a, an e-commerce property. Uh, we want to see how people get to the purchase event. The first uh, opening of a pattern will have only one step. You can uh, expand the step up to 10 steps by just clicking uh, on each node. It will expand to the previous node. Here you see event name will show the previous event name, but you can change that. You can mix and match event and, uh, and pages. And uh, in this case, let me look at uh, what was the page that uh, happened before event name. Checkout confirmation. If I go one step before, there was checkout review, and so on and so forth, uh, all the way to the beginning of the path. You can also see all the other paths uh, to that specific point. And a few interesting uh, features for this technique, you can apply a breakdown. For instance, uh, I can look at device category, and uh, that will show me this path by the different device. Most of this path is done on desktop, but you can see how mobile and tablet uh, perform. If you click, it will, it will persist. Uh, and you can uh, also, by over and over, you can see the detail uh, of the breakdown there. You can, of course, apply segment, apply filter into the technique. And one last uh, very cool feature in pattern is this uh, selection here, the view unique node. By default, it's selected. And this allows you, when a user does multiple events on the same page, for instance, to see that page only as one step. If I unselect this, if a user does multiple events in the same page, there will be multiple steps in the path. Selecting or selecting this option will uh, allow you to answer specific use cases where you might want to see user doing multiple times the same action versus user only doing multiple events in the same page in the same step. And with that, sir, that's everything about pathing. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Stefano, for showing us pathing. I think this is probably one of the most useful reports that people can look at to see how people, in this case, are getting to your purchase event, which can be used to then optimize the user flow on your website. Thank you, Krista. And with that, uh, we can move on, on the next um, behavior techniques. The next one is funnel. Uh, the first thing you have to do on a funnel is define the step that you want to create for the funnel. For the sake of time, I've pre-created this funnel analysis here that is looking at the purchase funnel. Uh, in the step builder, I'll show you how that looks like. This is what I've created. You, you can define, uh, give a name, each step, step one, step two, step three uh, of the purchase funnel. You select the condition that defines the step, gives the step a name, and then apply that list of steps to create your funnel. Here you see uh, all the drop-off uh, for each step of the funnel. See how many user uh, pass through uh, to the funnel and how many drop-off at each uh, uh, at each stage. You can see that both in a, in a visual form as well as in a table form here. And uh, you can make the funnel a very interesting functionality. You can make the funnel open and close 
close uh, as is the default. Uh, the user needs to start a funnel from the first step to be counted. An open funnel uh, is a funnel where the user can jump in into the funnel at every point in time. In this case, uh, we can see this group of users here that uh, didn't go to the home page but start directly to the shopping cart. Other uh, important functionality in funnel is the ability to see elapsed time. So that adds uh, the average time it takes user to do each step of the funnel. And you can also add the, the next action. So for each funnel step, you can uh, look at uh, what are the most common uh, events that the user do after a specific step uh, in the funnel. And uh, last but not least, uh, as uh, in all techniques in analysis, you can right click on a visualization and uh, uh, create segment of your user from, uh, from that uh, selection. And you can do that for, uh, for the user that uh, do pass through the funnel or the user, if you click down here, the user creates segment uh, from abandonment. So you can create a segment from the people that have not uh, moved on on the next step of the funnel that you're, uh, you're interested about. And with that, that's everything for the funnel technique. That's awesome, Stefano. There is so much value in this technique for users to be able to build and actually see how users are progressing through a funnel. And not only that, create segments and audiences of the drop-off to bring them back. So I love this. I hope you guys can take advantage of this technique. Awesome, thank you, Krista. And the last technique uh, that we wanna show you on this video is the core technique. On the core technique, uh, you can pick a starting point and an end point and see how user go through those two points. You do that through selecting the inclusion and the return criteria. The inclusion criteria is your start point, is how do user uh, get assigned to a court? And the return criteria is how do user get evaluated as coming back on each of the subsequent uh, uh, time period, in this case week, but you can change granularity to daily or monthly. Uh, the example we have here is first touch date. So these are the cohort of user that get acquired uh, to, this, uh, to this website. So they first visit the site on these weeks. And the return criteria is any event. Here you can select uh, all the events that you have available as a return criteria. We have any event, which is the, uh, the use case of, being, of looking at retention of uh, these many users that uh, were on the site for the first time during the week of October 18th, how many came back and did anything uh, during any of the following week. A couple of very interesting features for core technique is the ability to look at uh, metric type here. By default, we have the sum, but with the sum, is it can be hard to compare a court uh, to different court because they might have different overall number of users. So if we look at uh, metric type per court user, it turns uh, the number in percentages, so it makes it a lot easier to compare one court to the other. So here we can clearly see that in week one, the best performing court is the third court court here that has a 4.4% retention compared to the other court. Another interesting uh, functionality is the calculation type. By default, uh, we have a uh, standard calculation, which uh, evaluates the return criteria for the specific week we're looking at. So in this case, uh, these 410 users are the user that are active, uh, uh, that have done any event uh, on that week, second week after they were first acquired uh, during this week. But there are other use cases where we might want to know different type of calculation. Rolling calculation is the example uh, where you want to see user that did the return criteria not just on week two, but did the return criteria in any week up to that week. Uh, the other interesting uh, feature is that you don't have to look only at active user. You can look at any uh, of the metrics you have available in analysis. For instance, uh, since this is an e-commerce property, we have purchase revenue. And this gives you the purchase revenue uh, for the user that are returning on that week. And that couple with the third calculation, the cumulative calculation, gives you a very interesting uh, insight on what's the cumulative revenue of that court. So here you can see, for instance, this uh, $25,000 is uh, the cumulative revenue of the user that have been acquired on the week of October 18th, all the way to four weeks after they've been acquired. And that's everything for core technique. This is really awesome because there is so much more here that you can do in cohort techniques now in analysis and Google Analytics 4 properties than you ever would have been able to do in Universal Analytics. So I'm super excited for this. I hope you know users are too because there is lots of great insights to come here. 
Thank you so much, Stefano, for walking us through all of those techniques within analysis and Google Analytics for properties. There's so much exciting things here to try out. I hope you guys can get started today.